Hello everyone, this will be the Module 2 Master TA Lecture for CIT 247. So um, some topics I'll be going over in this lecture are the first one being the purpose of switches. So basically I'll be discussing what a switch is and what it does and how it works. I'll also be reviewing the ARP process and be teaching the ping process as well. These processes are very important because they help you understand how traffic, um, how network traffic goes through a network. It's very important to understand how that works, how it flows through a network. Finally, I'll be giving a demonstration of or demonstration on configuring the switch. Basically, this will be how to use the commands, and, we, and I'll be discussing the Cisco CLI environment. So our first topic is the switch. My definition for a switch is a layer 2 device that allows devices within the same LAN to communicate with one another. If you remember from my last lecture, a LAN is basically a broadcast domain. It's basically a network where one device can send a broadcast frame and it's forwarded to all of those devices. So a router, as you remember, divides broadcast domain or broadcast domains while switch is basically one big broadcast domain. So unlike hubs, switches examine incoming frames and send them only to their intended destinations. This is important because um, hubs and switches they basically serve a similar purpose. They allow devices within a network to communicate with one another within a I mean a local area network. A problem with hubs though is that they don't differ they don't do this. They don't examine the frames at all. They basically just broadcast everything. It doesn't matter if one computer is spending sending a specific or sending data to a specific computer. Basically what a hub is going to do, it's going to forward that traffic to everything. <clears throat> and only the this excuse me, and only the device that is intended to receive that that frame will actually take it. This is really bad for network performance. It causes a lot of congestion. It can also cause a lot of other issues like um, specific data or say two or it can, it can also it also causes um, collisions, which is where two computers actually send data at the same time. Switches prevent this by actually switches also prevent this like the um they basically separate each of the ports into their own collision domains. And they also do this, they, they examine incoming frames and only send them to their intended destinations, making them far more efficient and far more reliable too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So switches do this, switches actually do this process right here by recording the source MAC addresses of each device in its LAN and associating them with the ports that connect to these devices. So I have a screenshot here of a MAC address table. This is actually a Cisco CLI command right here. So this is a MAC address table. You see it has a MAC address and it associates it with a specific port that leads to that device's MAC or the device that owns this MAC address. This is how switches um, send traffic to specific destinations. So um, we're going to review the ARP process. Um, I'm going to be discussing the ping process here soon, but typically before ping can happen, ARP must take place. Um, so how that happens, as you remember, is a host wants to discover the MAC address of another host within the same LAN. If a device does not have the destination MAC address, it can't communicate with that device. So the host sends out an ARP request, which is a broadcasted frame that requests that the destination host's IP address be resolved to its MAC address. So the switch receives this frame from the source host and records the source MAC address and port from the source device and saves them in its MAC address table. It checks to see if the destination MAC address is in its table. If it's not, if the, if the destination host's MAC address is not found in this table, the switch then broadcasts the source host's request throughout the entire LAN, with only the host with the destination IP address accepting it. Or destination MAC address accepting it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The destination device then sends back an ARP reply, which is a frame that contains the device's MAC address as the source and the host's MAC address as a destination. The switch then receives this frame, records the destination host's MAC address and port, which is this port that, or the device that receives the ARP reply or response, or I'm sorry, the ARP request. And then the switch sends this frame to the source device. This device then adds the destination device's MAC address to its own MAC address table. 
So that's how ARP works. That's how devices in LAN discover each other's MAC addresses, which is important for them to. Um, this is important because without their MAC, without them knowing their MAC addresses, they can't communicate. So now we will discuss the ping process. So um, this is going to be another list of steps. Um, there's also a picture here I'll discuss in a minute. minute so let's let's take the scenario. So a host wants to send wants to send an echo request or ping to another host in the same LAN. As you may recall from the last lecture, ping basically is a, um, a communication that's used to ensure connectivity between two devices. It's basically a very simple connectivity test. So the two devices in this scenario already know each other's MAC addresses. In other words, ARP has already occurred. So in the second step, the source host forms the ping request packet. This is a layer 3 packet, which contains the source and destination host's IP addresses. This is layer 3 stuff. So this packet is then encapsulated into a, a, a layer 2 Ethernet frame containing the two devices' MAC addresses. This frame is then sent to the switch. Now, what's important here is that the layer th we have layer three communication with IP addresses. However, there's no router in this um, this network. So, basically, even when there is a router or a router, um, two devices that are adjacent to each other communicate with layer two. This is the MAC. This is like MAC addresses and stuff. So, basically, this layer three packet is encapsulated into a layer two frame. You could think of it like having a box. And putting that box in another box, and then sending that second box, these two boxes, out to um, a destination. That's basically how this works. So layer three packet is created. It has the source and destination IP addresses, and then this packet is encapsulated within a layer two frame, containing the source MAC address of the source host, and then containing the MAC address of that destination host in the same LAN. <clears throat> so when the switch receives the Ethernet frame. It examines the MAC destination MAC address and checks if it exists in the MAC address table. Since it does, it sends the frame to the port that is associated with the destination address. The destination host then receives the Ethernet frame and recognizes the destination MAC address to be its own. The host decapsulates the echo request from within the frame and recognizes the destination IP address to match its own. The destination host responds to the echo request by sending an echo reply containing the source host's IP address as the destination layer 3 address. This packet is then encapsulated in an Ethernet frame containing the source host's MAC address as the destination layer 2 address. <clears throat> the switch then receives this frame, matches, matches the destination MAC address to its source host or to the source host from the scenario and then sends the frame to it. The source host then receives the frame matches the MAC address to its own, decapsulates the frame, and then determines that the ping exchange between it and the destination host was successful. So that's basically how network traffic, how network um, packets and frames are trafficked through a network. That's basically how devices communicate in a network, through um, layer 3 and layer 2 communications working together. We'll learn more about layer 3 uh, when we get to routers, but just understand that's how um, devices in a LAN communicate. So now we will go on, move on to our switch configuration overview. In this class, we will be configuring virtual machines in GNS3. This will require extensive use of these devices' terminals, which is known as the Cisco CLI. To do this, you will need to understand how this environment works and how to use its commands. This section will provide a demonstration of how to do this. I'm actually going to demonstrate this in GNS myself, but first, let's understand, let's get to know the Cisco CLI modes. So there are three major privilege modes on switches, and this is also the same for routers, but um, for this, just understand this is for switches right now. We're focusing on switches right now. So the first mode is user mode. This provides limited privileges. Privileges. You can read some things, or like you can see some data on the switch, but you cannot configure anything. With the exception of Telnet connections, GNS skips this mode. This is important because when you sign in, so like here, when you sign into your switch, it's like this. This pound sign represents enable, the enable mode, which we'll be discussing in a minute. Um, user mode is just a um, greater than sign, I believe. So um, when you start up a switch or a router in GNS, it's going to be um, in enable mode already, unless you sign in with Telnet, and then in that case, it starts in user mode. 
So speaking of enabled mode, this mode lets you see all data and perform some configurations. There isn't much you can change on the switch in enable mode. There's a few things, but most of our changes are going to be focusing on configuration mode. This is a mode or a privilege mode that allows you to change many settings on the switch. This mode and its submodes will be used extensively in this course. We'll be discussing those in a minute, but so this little um, flow chart right here. Basically, when you connect to a switch, either through a connect console connection through like a um, serial cable, or or console cable, or um, connect to it to connect to it virtually or digitally by telnet or SSH, you arrive in user mode on a real switch. This is basically a mode where you can use a few show commands, which is how you see data on the switch, but you really can't change anything. You need to sign it into enable mode, which is typically password, user and password protected. Then finally, you type a specific command, and you can enter global, config or global configuration mode or configuration mode, which lets you configure stuff. So let's actually demonstrate this right here in GNS. So I have a switch right here. It's already in enable mode. Now, the first thing you need to understand when working with switches is that in order to see the configurations, you need to use what's known as show commands. So basically, you type in the command show, and then you type in the specific thing you want to see. So there's a bunch of different commands you're going to learn. I'm actually going to have a command guide to show you some of these show commands later on in this course. But um, here's an example of a show command. So show IP interface read. So what this command does is let you see a let you see every interface on the switch, and you can see like the IP addresses whether it's up or not. Basically, that's whether it's working. So that's one example of a show command. Another one is show VLAN brief. Oops. Okay. Show VLAN brief, which basically lets you see um, v number of the VLAN configurations on the switch. Um, we'll learn about VLANs later, but that's basically to let you know this is how you see configurations. Use the word show. Now, an interesting thing about the Cisco CUI is you can actually use shortcuts. So show int so, so IP in brief, you can actually type in shortcuts. This is very helpful for the labs. So you can actually abbreviate some of the words. Um, you have to experiment to see how short you can make some of these abbreviations, but they really help out. So um, you can't really configure stuff on here in enable mode. You need to go to config configure terminal. This is global configuration mode. This basically is the mode where you will be configuring stuff. It's basically changing modes. You can think of it like um, like if you're on the um, Linux CLI and you go to root privileges, it's not the same thing exactly, but basically like root lets you do a lot more things. This is kind of like what that is. This is basically just making some serious changes to the switch and its configurations. So to exit global configuration mode, you can type exit. If you're also in a sub mode, you can also type end. But here is a shortcut to get into global configuration mode, conf t. That's all you have to type to get in here. I would highly recommend you type conf t because it's much shorter. It saves a lot of time. So an example of, of a configuration that we could enter in is, um, let me think here. So IP address. So, oh, actually, to configure IP addresses on switches and routers, you need to enter an interface mode. So um, to in other words, if you want, you need to configure a specific interface. To do this, you enter. You need to enter the interface sub configuration mode. So to do this, you could type interface VLAN one. That is an interface on the switch. Um, so this is. You notice here how this changed. This part here changed. This is a sub mode, a sub configuration mode. There's lots of these in that. There's a lot of these on the switch. You'll learn about them as you work in this course, but this is basically how you configure specific interfaces. To configure an IP address on the switch, you can do IP address 192.168.0.4 and then type in the subnet mask. Now, another thing you'll need to do when you're configuring an interface on the switch is to enable it. Now, to um, shut down an interface, you can just type the shutdown command. To disable that, you type in no shut or no shutdown. So this is another important um, consideration when working with the Swiss Cisco CLI. To undo something, you need to type no. 
you need to you need to start it with no. So let me show you. Shut down. So you see here the switch actually gives you little messages when you do some certain things. So we actually, if you see here, we shut down the interface. Interface VLAN 1 is administratively down with this command. If we want to undo that, we do no shut down or no shut. So just give it a minute and yeah, there we go. So that's basically how you work with the Cisco CLI. I'm going to be giving you some command guides throughout the semester that will um, give you the commands you need to work with. But Lab 2 in this um, class will actually give you everything you need most if not everything you need to um, work out the lab. So that's pretty much it for this lecture. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or concerns about this class or the next lab, uh, be feel free to email me. Um, I'm available for Zoom appointments. I'm happy to help you all. Um, thank you again for watching and have a good day.